All right, folks, today we are going to be talking about sort of the early days of chemistry. So now we actually do properly have chemistry as a field of study. We have that law of conservation of mass that we learned from Antoine and Marianne Lavoisier. Uh, and we are going to move a little bit further in time, not terribly farther. So now we're uh, dealing in the early, early 1800s. So like your 1800s is roughly when this work is being done. We're going to talk about John Dalton. Uh, John Dalton is an Englishman. Uh, he's lower class, right? He doesn't have a lot of money. Um, his family is so poor that he actually has to start working to help support his family at the age of 10. So he starts working as a 10-year-old um, to earn wages to help support his family. Um, he is a Quaker, which is a really, really interesting subset of Christianity. So in Christianity, there's lots of different groups of Christians. Um, in much of Europe, Catholicism is the dominant group. So Catholicism is more hierarchical. It has a pope, so there's a person who's right in, the, in charge of it. Uh, in England, the state church is something called the Church of England, which was sort of split off from Catholicism by a king, so he divorced his wives. But you don't really need to necessarily know about that right now. What's that? Oh, you, you already learned about the Church of England? Excellent. Um, now, Dalton is not a member of the Church of England. Uh, the Church of England, the head of the church is the king. Uh, in, the, in Catholicism, the head of the church is the pope. Dalton is a Quaker, and the Quakers are the anarchists of Christianity. They do not believe in hierarchy in church leadership. To the extent that Quakers don't even have like uh, the equivalent of a pastor or a rabbi or an imam or a priest, there's no one person who is believed to have any more right to speak on God's behalf than any other. Um, Quakers believe that the light of God exists in all people and that any individual can be moved by the spirit uh, to speak. Um, they have, rather than like servants where people come and talk at you and give you a lecture like I'm doing now. So the Quakers, rather than having like sermons and priests, instead have what they call meetings where everyone in the Quaker community gathers and anyone if they feel moved by the spirit, can like stand up and speak. So there is no hierarchy in this. Um, so they are not part of the dominant religious group in England at the time. They're their own sort of interesting subset. Um, the Quakers are the group that John Dalton is a member of. He starts uh, working for another wealthier member of the, of the community, what they call friends. Uh, when he is 10 years old, at 15, he gets a different job, he goes to become a school teacher. So 15 years old, teaching school. Um, he would like to go to university and study law or maybe medicine, but he can't because at this period in time, the universities in England are not open to what is called dissenters. So dissenters are people who aren't members of the Church of England. So because he's a Quaker, he's locked out of the traditional of access to education. So very different from what we talked about two days ago in the golden age of Islam, where his religion would not have been an issue. Here in England at this period of time, he's locked out of most of the key universities. Yes, Maki? Wait, so he can't go to some of these schools because he's Quaker? Because he's a Quaker. Okay, what are these schools teaching? Uh, so, there's universe, so now we're in the 1700s. We do have proper universities in uh, England. So these schools would be, he, would, he wanted to study like law or medicine, uh, but he can't do that. Instead, he ends up uh, learning from specific individuals. There's a guy named John Gow, Goff, I'm not entirely sure how his name is pronounced, uh, but he learns from that individual instead, and he teaches him philosophy and science. Uh, Dalton ends up spending most of his life as a teacher. He's a school teacher, and then he eventually does become a university teacher. Apparently, he's not, getting to, like, he's not allowed to attend university as a student, but he's able to get hired as, at one as a, as a professor, eventually. Um, and he does some really, really important and critical work in the sciences. He's very interested in meteorology, the study of weather. And he starts this journal where he begins to take readings about things like atmospheric pressure, and what the weather is like, and what's going on with gases, and he does this every single day of his life. Over the next 57 years, he will write down over 200,000 individual pieces of data. 
So in terms of ways in which science is changing, we're now moving from just the idea of there being quantitative data to the idea of analyzing entire sets of data. Not just like one measurement or one number, but huge amounts of data that you can really look through, dig into, and analyze. Dalton does a ton of deeply, deeply important work. Um, he's mostly interested in studying gases and atmosphere and things. And along the way, he realizes some important things. Um, hydrogen is the lightest gas that he can find. Right? Everything else seems to be heavier than hydrogen. And so what he does is he actually says, okay, if hydrogen's the heaviest thing, we're going to be able to measure how heavy different gases and different elements are by comparing them to hydrogen. You said lighter. Sorry, hydrogen's the lightest thing. So we're going to be able to measure how heavy other things are by comparing them to hydrogen. So he says, okay, we're going to say hydrogen has a mass of one. That's going to be our sort of baseline. So he's coming up with a new unit for measuring the mass of atoms. And he calls that unit for measuring the mass of atoms the atomic mass unit, or AMU. In atomic mass units, hydrogen has a mass of one. And everything else, we're basically saying, like, oh, oxygen, that's as heavy as 16 hydrogens. So oxygen has an atomic mass of 16 AMUs. So we now have a way of measuring the mass of individual atoms. This is going to give us a way of comparing elements, right? So we can say the element hydrogen. Hydrogen, again, is like a type of matter, right? So the element hydrogen has a mass of one. Other elements have masses that are heavier than hydrogen, and we can say, okay, well, you know, oxygen gas is 32 times heavier, or, or oxygen gas is 16 times heavier than hydrogen gas, so we can say oxygen's 16 times heavier than hydrogen. Uh, so, oxygen would have 16 atomic mass units. Yeah, the mass of an oxygen atom is 16 atomic mass units. The mass of a hydrogen atom is one atomic mass unit a little bit more complicated because in nature we actually find hydrogen in pairs and we also find oxygen in pairs. So hydrogen gas is two atomic mass units and oxygen gas is 32 atomic gas units, uh, atomic mass units, but still in either case 16 times heavier. Uh, all right, so we have a way of measuring the mass of individual atoms. Uh, Dalton is going to be the source of our first really like coherent uh, explanation for what the hell chemistry actually is, right? He pulls together a set of like five rules that say this is what chemistry is. It's called his atomic theory. So Dalton's five part atomic theory is really, really important. And I'm gonna go through all five parts of it. Some of these things you will find are coming from other people in the past, right? He's not the first person to come up with all these ideas, but he is gathering them together and presenting them together as like one really solid, consistent argument. So the first thing he says is he explains what an element is in relation to an atom. So elements are types of matter. Atoms are the individual pieces of matter that make up an element. So he says, okay, an element is like the category. You could say we've got like the element of hydrogen. And then the individual pieces, the tiny particles that make it up, we're gonna call those atoms. So hydrogen is like the substance. Hydrogen atoms would be the individual pieces. Elements are basically different types of atoms. So now we have that word atom coming up again. We know that word came from ancient Greece and Democritus. Um, people have known about you know, different elements, different types of materials for ages, but now we're finally connecting the idea of atoms to the idea of elements. So that's the first thing. Elements are made of tiny particles called atoms. This is 100% true and correct. This is still how we think about this to this day. Uh, point number two says all atoms 
of a given element have the same size, mass, and other properties. So what Dalton is saying here is every hydrogen atom is the same. Every gold atom is the same. Every oxygen atom is the same, right? They're gonna behave the same way. They're gonna react the same way. They're gonna do the same sort of things. They're gonna have the same mass. This is almost entirely true. Later on, we'll learn that every once in a while, you'll run into an atom that's just maybe a tiny bit heavier or a tiny bit lighter. We'll call those isotopes. So this is true except for this mass thing. The mass can, can be a little bit off. So this is almost entirely true. But broadly speaking, it's fairly accurate. We will mostly think about that. Uh, and it is the case that atoms of the same element have the same properties. They're, they're always going to react the same way. They're going to have the same types of chemical reactions. They're going to do the same things. Um, they're going to behave the same way. Now, idea number three says that atoms cannot be subdivided, created, or destroyed. Now, who came up with this idea originally? Yeah, this is what Democritus said. The word atom literally means uncuttable. So here he's really just reiterating what we've been saying about atoms since ancient Greece. He says, hey, you can't, you can't cut these, right? Now when we say they can't be created or destroyed, whose work is that building on? We say atoms can't be created or destroyed. Yeah, that's building on the ideas of the Lavoisiers with that law of conservation of mass. So he's saying, hey, matter can't be created or destroyed, right? Atoms specifically can't be created or destroyed. This is going to mostly be true. Uh, there are some very specific exceptions uh, in places like the hearts of stars or uh, nuclear bombs or nuclear power plants, uh, the latter two of which do not exist yet, uh, it is technically possible to split the atom, and we will learn about how that is done later on. Uh, but broadly speaking, in daily life, that's going to be true. Most of the time, that's going to be accurate, that atoms can't be subdivided, created, or destroyed. There are some special exceptions. But when you're doing chemistry, absolutely that's the case. We're not creating, we're destroying atoms. Point number four How, do I need to slow down for a moment? How are we doing? There's a lot of information. I just cut up. We're, we're in a little bit of a difficult place because I now have to move from like just telling stories to giving you like some significant content about what chemistry is. And I recognize that's a little bit of a, of a departure where like the content here is pretty important. Uh, but point number four says that atoms of different elements are going to combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. This is a lot of words that might be hard to initially wrap your head around. Effectively, what he's saying is he's defining what a chemical is. Yes. Can you repeat what you said after whole number? Uh, so number four is right here. Uh, okay. Atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. It's a lot of words. What this means is he's defining what a chemical compound is. Basically, he's saying this is what a molecule is. That when you have a chemical, what, you're, what you actually have is a combination of atoms where you have a certain number of one thing combined with a certain number of another thing. So for example, water is a chemical. And in the chemical water, we have H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. All water everywhere is always going to be exactly two hydrogens and exactly one oxygen. So we have a whole number ratio. It's not that you have half an oxygen with one water, with one hydrogen, right? It has to be whole numbers, like one, two, three, four, five, no fractions, no decimals, right? If you have something like methane gas, 
which is CH4, that's going to be one carbon and four hydrogens, right? Whole number ratios. And usually it's going to be the simplest possible whole number ratio. Not always, but usually. So we're going to have whole number ratios, and that's what a chemical is. What a molecule is, is a combination of atoms. So if we think way back to that sort of ancient Greek idea of like what even is an element, this idea that there's only a small number of types of matter, but that you can combine them to create loads of new things, that's what Dalton is saying, right? We have a certain number of elements, a certain number of types of atom, and you can combine those different types of atom together to make new types of matter. So, you know, carbon dioxide is a molecule, it's a chemical compound that's made out of two different elements, carbon and oxygen. Exactly one carbon, exactly two oxygen. Wait, what? What's that? What was the element? Uh, so the molecule is carbon dioxide. That's an example of a chemical compound. The elements that make it up are carbon and oxygen, and specifically you have one carbon atom mm -hmm. and two oxygen atoms. So that's a whole number ratio, right? For every one carbon, there's going to be two oxygens. Water is a molecule, it's a chemical compound, and every single water molecule in all of existence is going to have one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. So there's two different elements that make up this molecule, this chemical compound. That's why it's called carbon dioxide. Carbon, di means two, oxide. So it's carbon, two oxygen, right? That's what the name of that molecule means. Water is H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Methane is CH4, one carbon, four hydrogens. So all of these different types of matter, right, can break down into a handful of different elements. So there's only a small number of types of material, but we can combine them to create new things. And so, those new things are called molecules? Say that again? The new things are called molecules? Yeah, so molecules would be the individual particles. Uh, if we wanted to talk about like the concept of water, that's a chemical. And then a water molecule would be an individual particle that has two hydrogens attached, attached to an oxygen. So it's sort of like elements are types of matter, and then we have atoms as like the particles of that element. Same thing is true with molecules and chemical. Chemical is the type of substance, and a molecule is the individual particles, which is gonna be made of multiple atoms uh, joined together. Show. Elements are made up of atoms, and molecules are made up of elements? Uh, elements, the, the particle of an element is an atom. Yeah. The particle of a chemical is a molecule. Molecules are made up of a combination of atoms, so you could say that chemicals are made up of a combination of elements. Well, so, okay, it's, really it's like uh, the category, the name for the thing is element or chemical, right? So like, I could talk about bleach, and that's like a whole big category. And there's a billion different bottles of bleach under a billion different people's sinks, right? But if I have an individual particle of bleach, that would be like a bleach molecule. Does that make sense? And those are all the same. And those are all the same, right? There is water all over this planet. Water's like a whole big category, a big concept. But every single particle of water is a water molecule. And every single water molecule is going to be two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. Right? So, like, the concept, the name is either element or chemical. And the individual pieces are atoms or molecules. All right. So, point number four, completely 100% accurate. That's how we talk about chemistry. Right? Point number four is saying basically this is what a chemical reaction is. A chemical reaction is, you, is when you combine some atoms of different elements to create a chemical compound. Right? And point number five, just to reiterate that, point number five says in chemical reactions, saying what a chemical reaction is, atoms are combined, separated, or rearranged. 
Point number five is why that law of conservation of mass that we talked about yesterday is true, right? Why is it that when Mary Anne Lavoisier, you know, burned a piece of wood in a bell jar, right, she ended up with the same mass afterwards? It's because what actually happened when we burned things is we like broke apart some molecules and then reassembled them into new mo molecules. But the total number of atoms was the same. So no atoms were created and destroyed, so the total mass didn't change. Right? A chemical reaction is just rearranging these individual particles, right? Sort of taking a molecule, breaking it up into individual atoms, and then recombining those atoms in new ways. Yossi? Did John Dalton build off of their idea? Absolutely. Naya? So when you get heavier, are you creating do you have more atoms? Uh, yes, when you get heavier, you have more atoms. So when you eat food, right, you're putting more atoms into your body, and your body can take, you're, you're putting molecules, right, usually in the form of like carbohydrates or proteins. These are like really big molecules, and your body can take those big molecules, break them down into their constituent parts, and then use them to build new materials. You literally are what you eat, right? You, you are made of that matter. All right. How are we doing so far? I know this was a lot, because I just crammed basically a miniature lesson on what is chemistry into the middle of what has otherwise been about mostly me telling stories. But this is a really, really important five-part atomic theory. If you have not written these down, you should take a moment and make sure all five of these points are written down in your notes. 